have you heard of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? When I first spoke about the Australian band, they had released 12 albums in 6 years, with 5 albums released in 2017 alone. It was that year that really saw King Gizzard take off in popularity thanks to their saturation in the scene, but also because each of their albums saw the band explore a new and unique direction. Aside from their creative blend of psychedelic garage rock, the band had tried their hand at crafting everything from spoken word rock operas to explorations in microtonal tuning. There was the infinitely looping album Nonagon Infinity, the progressive space rock album that they gave away for free, and the jazz rock album divided into four tracks that are each 10 minutes and 10 seconds long, aptly named Orders. Since 2017, the band have released 12 more albums, bringing their total to 25 albums in just over a decade. That's an average of 2.27 albums per year, meaning we could expect King Gizzard to drop their 100th record by about 2056. But in the meantime, let's take a look at how the band's sound has evolved over the second half of their discography, and where you should begin listening if you've never heard of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. If you simply want to hear what are widely considered the best albums from the band and get a broad overview of their styles, Nonagon Infinity, I'm In Your Mind Fuzz, and Polygon Wonderland will open the door for you. I'd even throw in Flying Microtonal Banana for something a bit more quirky. But if you like any of these, you can bet you'll enjoy a lot more from the band, because the journey doesn't end there. Since 2017, King Gizzard has continued to evolve, not only in terms of production quality, but there's been a noticeable shift towards more genre blending and experimentation as well as a change in the themes and concepts they explore in their music. And that divide began with their final of five albums in 2017, Gumboot Soup. The year's four other records arrived with their own unique and cohesive concepts, but Gumboot Soup deliberately lacks any sort of singular theme. The record is composed of songs that didn't quite fit on the other albums released in 2017. And in a sense, that is the concept. A soup made from a bunch of ingredients that came together to create a unique and flavorful album. Gumboot Soup is basically a King Gizzard buffet. If you like even one track from it, you'll find at least one full album that matches your taste. But the band also looked forward to courses in doom metal, like in The Great Chain of Being, as well as a taste of progressive electronics with Superposition. The album is totally overlooked because of this range of sounds, because if you enjoyed any of the concepts from the 2017 records, you'd probably be listening to that record instead. And as for the new genre stirred in, we'd get to experience those soon enough, after the long halt of 2018. For the next 481 days, King Gizzard would refrain from releasing any new music. It was the longest the band had gone without releasing a record since their debut in 2012. I'd say they deserved the break, but the band didn't take one. King Gizzard took that time to focus on touring, and with their growing popularity, they'd reissue some of their older records, as well as their official version of Polygon Wanaland from 2017. The 55-week silence was finally broken in 2019, with one of their most divisive tracks up to this point. Full of 80s synths and a catchy but repetitive hook, Psy Boogie was a fairly drastic change of pace. Nor was it very representative of their next album, Fishing for Fishies. Fishing for the record ended up being a wholesome blend of boogie and blues rock. That means a focus on groove and some of the best bass lines in Giz history. And Psy Boogie makes a lot more sense in the context of the album where we can trace the sonic journey of going from the playful psych pop of the title track to the heavier synth punk of its closer. Plenty of the tracks on the record also carry an environmental theme with a critique of humanity's relationship with nature. But just before Fishing for Fishies released, the band surprised us with a second single, teasing another album to come in 2019, Infest the Rat's Nest. There is no planet B. We were just a few months from having heard one of their most mellow records when the boys would release their heaviest album to date. They had dipped their toes into metal elements in the past, but they'd finally make a full thrash metal album filled with chugging riffs and double kick drumming. Infest the Rat's Nest was composed and recorded primarily by only three of the band's usual seven-man lineup. Stu McKenzie and Joe Walker recorded the guitar and bass parts, with Michael Cavanaugh absolutely destroying the kit. The if you've never listened to a metal record before, this could be a great entry point. The album is a collection of cliches from 80s and 90s thrash metal, yet executed so well that it stands out even among veterans of the genre. The band didn't just mimic the style, they owned it. 
delivering something that's both nostalgically authentic and impressively fun. It's nine tracks total of tight 35 minutes, meaning the sound doesn't overstay its welcome either. Thematically, the album blends apocalyptic themes with science fiction, addressing ecological disasters and climate change. It's climate science fiction. Cli-Fi. It tells a tale of humanity fleeing Earth due to a catastrophic superbug. This was before COVID, by the way. While the second half of the record follows rebels trying to colonize Venus. By the end of 2019, the band was coming out of a very prolific year and a tour that gave birth to several live albums. Inspired by the band's innovative release of Polygon Wanaland, an album you can download for free, sell, and produce your own vinyl copies of, led to the creation of Bootlegger, a program encouraging fans to freely download, produce, and sell the band's live recordings and demos, with the sole condition that some copies are provided to the band for sale on their store. And then COVID-19 shut down the world in 2020. Like most performers, King Gizzard's shows and events would be postponed and eventually cancelled. In August, Eric Moore, their second drummer and acting manager, announced that he would be stepping away from the band to focus on growing their music label, Flightless Records. Although, none of this was going to stop King Gizzard from releasing another record. Or two. When the band labeled their album Fly Microtonal Banana with a Volume 1, the fandom would expect further explorations into microtonal tuning eventually. Crafted remotely and arriving within just a few months of each other were KG and LW, two fresh volumes featuring that Turkish psych rock sound and desert feel. <laughs> Where Flying Microtonal Banana is more raw and experimental, these records are more diverse and detailed in their sound. You'll find acoustic, folk-leaning tracks like Honey, heavy metal riffs on both of their closing tracks, and those divisive acid synth sounds on Intrasport. KG has some of the stronger tracks, but LW is a bit more cohesive and consistent with the microtonal theme. Generally, both lack some of the hooks and melodies of previous records, but it's hard to complain when the band are simply honoring past promises and would release yet another record with a new direction only three months later. I'm talking about Butterfly 3000. Butterfly 3000's origins stem from when the band were recording instrumental interludes for one of their live albums. They had accidentally made a synth-pop track that they felt warranted a project of its own. When the band were attempting to create a follow-up to their record Polygon Wanaland, they arrived at similar sounding tracks like Black Hot Soup, You Love, and Shanghai. The beginnings of a sort of dream pop album. <laughs> Butterfly 3000 is not only one of the band's most uplifting and melodic records sonically, but also thematically. Frontman Stu's daughter was born during the album's recording, and the motif of the butterfly came to represent his feelings of transformation, hope, and responsibility. It's not the King Gizzard album we wanted, but it was the one we needed. After the decent detours into microtonal tuning, Butterfly 3000 delivered their best and most consistent release since Infest the Rat's Nest, but it is a fairly big change if you were looking for more rock music from the guys. And then we got likely one of King Gizzard's oddest releases, Made in Timeland. Initially conceived as intermission music for their three-hour live shows, Made in Timeland soon expanded into its own project. The album, if you can call it that, consists of two 15-minute tracks that are mainly instrumental forays into progressive electronic music. Ambrose even raps at one point. Another papa, do your strings, another sucker with a broken wing. Largely loose and experimental, what holds it all together are that the tracks coincide with the ticking of a clock, following a tempo of 60 beats per minute throughout. The project was later planned to be an exclusive vinyl-only release at the band's Timeline Festival on New Year's Eve 2021, but when the festival was cancelled due to COVID concerns, the release was left in limbo. However, some vinyl copies of the project had made it into the public, and in the early months of 2022, Timeline leaks could be heard on the internet. What was only meant to be a special memento for fans attending the Timeland Festival eventually saw a physical release in March, and later on streaming platforms in October. Remember when King Gizzard released Fishing for Fishies? Like two years and five albums ago? Well, when they were recording that album, they had an impromptu jam session with fellow Australian rock band Tropical Fuckstorm. This collaboration ultimately influenced two separate pieces of work, the Satanic Slumber Party EP and King Gizzard's 18-minute epic The Dripping Tap, featured on their next album, Omnium Gathering. The, 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 the 
the title pretty much translates to a collection of everything. And that's exactly what this record gave us. This is King Gizzard's White Album, a double album showcasing their range of styles and technical ability. There's the dream pop of Butterfly 3000, the heavy psych metal of Infest the Rat's Nest, a little synths, a lot of funk, and more than one hip hop inspired cut. Similar to Gumboot Soup, Omnium Gathering began as a way to release songs that didn't fit on older records. The variety of styles can make it feel a bit all over the place, but it does make you appreciate the band's diversity in sound and their consistent creativity. Omnium Gathering was also the first album the band crafted together in the studio since the pandemic began, and it would be a major turning point in how they would approach future records. King Gizzard were entering their jam band period, which led to the announcement of three albums planned for the month of October. First up was Ice, Death, Planets, Lungs, Mushrooms, and Lava. The album was recorded in a single week. Every day of that week, the band showed up in the studio with no previous preparation. No demos, riffs, or melodies. They would simply jam and improvise, but with a new guiding word, set tempo, and different musical scale each day. This is how we got the album's title. Each first letter of a word corresponds to the first letter of a scale being used. These different scales can influence the mood and emotion felt in tracks. It's the reason why Mycelium sounds so cheery, and why Glee 710 feels so uneasy. Stu would take those jams and assemble them into songs, and the band would later add overdubs, more instrumentation, and lyrics together. Ice, Death, Planets, Lungs, Mushrooms, and Lava is widely considered one of King Gizzard's strongest albums since 2017. It's probably why the second album of Giztober is somewhat overlooked. In Anagram 4, Made in Timeland, Laminated Denim is regarded as a spiritual successor to Timeland. It too adheres to a 60 beat per minute tempo and consists of two 15 minute tracks, but that's about where the similarities end. Laminated Denim embraces a more rock centric approach, trading the electronic focus of Timeland for polyrhythms and the hypnotic nature of Krautrock. These tracks also sound more like the spiritual successors to the song Sweets on Quarters or I'm in Your Mind Fuzz. If you miss that classic King Gizzard style, you'll find it matured here. If you're looking for some change though, look no further than changes. What it feels like. it feels like. This would be the longest amount of time King Gizzard had ever spent on a single record. Changes was meant to be the final of the five albums in 2017, but when the band felt it wouldn't be finished by their end of year deadline, they cooked up gumboot soup instead. The reason for the delay is in the title. Changes refers to the key changing concept that the band is employing here. Typically, a song stays in one key giving us about seven chords to choose from. The tracks on changes alternate between two keys, effectively giving King Gizzard 14 chords to choose from. But usually, chords outside of its set key sound wrong or a bit odd next to each other. So if you want to make music this way and still keep it melodic, every note has to be more considered because you only have so many notes between those two keys to make those changes sound pleasant. If you don't notice any of this, it just means they've pulled it off well. What you will notice is how dynamic, colorful, and unpredictable the track list can be. The mood can quickly go from joyful to intense, or energetic to ethereal. And King Gizzard manages to make it all fit together smoothly with a mellow psych pop sound. And would you look at that? King Gizzard released five albums in one year, again. We were all two albums behind and the band were already planning two more albums for 2023, claiming they would carry a sort of yin and yang concept, with both sounding very different from one another, but also complementary. Petrodragonic Apocalypse arrived first. Petro After having built some confidence in exploring stoner and thrash metal over the years, the band brought those dark and heavy sounds to their impromptu jam sessions, ultimately crafting Petrodragonic Apocalypse or Dawn of Eternal Night, an annihilation of planet Earth and the beginning of Merciless Damnation, and it's heavy as f
While Infest the Rat's Nest is the better metal record, thanks to its catchier riffs and accessibility, Petrodragonic Apocalypse is the better King Gizzard record, showing off the band's technical mastery and experimental edge. There are only seven tracks on the album, but nearly every one of them is brilliant, especially that second half. Lyrically, it's also one of the band's best yet. Critiquing our over-reliance and worship on technology, our vulnerability to the power of nature, and our small place in the grand scheme of the universe. While they've become known for their prolific genre switching, King Gizzard has continued to address climate change and environmental issues in their later albums, each with a unique approach. They're entertaining, but they also provoke thoughts and discussion about pressing environmental issues using their music as a platform to highlight the urgency of climate change and the need for a more harmonious relationship with our planet. Because there is no planet B. Sorry. Rising sea levels, pollution, and overfishing for fishies has put 25% of freshwater fish at risk of extinction. And hotter temperatures are breeding more mosquitoes, causing literal superbug viruses to flare up across the globe. But then we'll read something like this, that cutting pollution also heats up the planet. So what are we to believe? Lately, I've been using our sponsor, Ground News, to learn about issues in a way that looks past bias. It's a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer with a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven way to read their news. I can't be the only one frustrated with the general unreliability of news today. On Ground News, every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias and factuality of the sources reporting it all rated by independent news monitoring organizations. You can compare articles from different sources on the same topic, like environmental issues, to see what details are being emphasized, exaggerated, or left out from different outlets. There's even a blind spot feed that highlights stories that are mainly being covered by one side of the political spectrum. So if you lean right, you may have missed this story. And if you lean left, you might have missed this one. Ground News has quickly become my favorite way to consume news because I'm getting a more honest representation of that news. It makes me a better informed human. And you're finding out about this at a great time. You can go to ground.news forward slash middle and take advantage of their holiday sale. It's their best deal of the year. Until the end of the year, you can get 40% off unlimited access to their app, website, and newsletters for only five bucks a month. So go to ground.news forward slash middle or click the link down in the description to see how your reading habits change over the next month. You'll be supporting the channel as well as independent news platforms looking to make the media landscape more transparent. Now let's get back to Petrodragonic Apocalypse. Hey. 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 The second half of the album is about dragons eating witches during the apocalypse though. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone, almost quite literally, as the end of this album begins teasing the direction of their second album of the year, The Silver Core. With another left turn, King Gizzard would transition from progressive metal to progressive electronic music, ranging from acid techno to ethereal synth pop. After drummer Michael Cavs purchased an electronic drum kit, the whole band decided to sell their guitars and buy turntables, focusing on synth-based sounds. It's a darker and more dense electronic venture than something like Butterfly 3000 or Made in Timeland. There's also two versions of this record, the shortened 28-minute rendition and the extended 88-minute edition. The extended mix does enhance the experience, allowing tracks to breathe and go to more interesting places. But some tracks work better shortened, while others work better extended. King Gizzard split them across two discs, sort of leaving listeners to find out which ones are best for themselves. A significant shift towards electronic, The Silver Chord is likely one of the band's most divisive releases. Thematically, the album makes a lot of references to mythology and folklore, while interpolating moments and lyrics from Petrodragonic Apocalypse, like a mirror. For example, Thea shares Motor Spirit's refrain, oh. while Swan Song interpolates a verse from Dragon. If you simply want the best albums from King Gizzard post-2017, Ice Death, Petrodragonic Apocalypse, and Omnium Gathering. King Gizzard have truly found a new stride in their jam band era, showcasing their variety of styles, their lyrical creativity, and willingness to challenge themselves through their concepts. Add to that an approach where urgency meets creativity and curiosities become gateways into possible territories, and you have a band that has not only defined their sound, but has also forged a distinct legacy. There is no band like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. They are something of a phenomenon. Tell me, what sounds do you hope the band explore more in the future? 
Let me know in the comments below. Follow me over at More Middle 8. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you loved it. I'll see you in 2030, when the band have released 13.6 new albums. Thanks for watching, and keep listening to King Gizzard.